let's talk for a few moments about the Thursday before Resurrection Sunday. What exactly was Jesus doing on Thursday and what does it have to do with you and I? Well, you probably remember that it was on Thursday that Jesus shared the Last Supper with his disciples. It was on Thursday that he was betrayed and on Thursday he would be arrested. But before his arrest, Thursday evening, I want to talk about his time in the Garden of Gethsemane and I want to focus on one particular aspect of his time in that garden. These words are probably familiar to you as we hear Jesus calling out to his Father and he's beginning to labor under the weight of what he knows he is about to do the next day, which is to suffer and die on the cross. And in his humanness, because Jesus is the God-man, he took on flesh, 100% human, 100% God. And in his humanness, he is beginning to feel that burden. He's beginning to anticipate what is actually going to happen. And as he does that, we hear these words in Matthew Chapter 26, verse 39. Jesus says, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. We read that Jesus cried to the point of shedding blood through his tears. And that he was pretty much going to the Father and begging if there's any other way. If it's possible, Father, for you to take this cup away from me. What cup is that? Well, he had just honored that cup with his disciples at Passover, at the Last Supper. That cup is the wrath of God that he would drink for you and I. And he described it to his disciples as his blood. The cup represents his blood. The bread represents his broken body. And often in the Bible, a cup will represent the suffering that someone must go through. And in this case, Jesus, the Son, was going to suffer for our sin. And he begs God, if there's any other way, take this cup. But yet, he says, when all is said and done, he says, but not as I will. Not as the Son, the one who is walking in flesh. Not as I will. Because, of course, the humanity of Jesus, the flesh of Jesus, did not want to suffer. But he said, not as I will, but Father, as you will. As we, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three persons of the Trinity, as we had planned from eternity past, that is what I desire to be done. And so Jesus did. He went to the cross. He was arrested. He was scourged. He was beaten. He was mocked. He was spit upon. He was nailed to the cross of Calvary. He hung there. And in those moments on the cross, it was not just the physical pain. We tend to only think about that. But it was the emotional pain, the spiritual pain of bearing the weight of the sin of everyone. Every bit of the guilt uh, that comes upon us from sin, every bit of the wrath of a holy God that we deserve, Jesus experienced on that cross. 
He felt the emotional separation from the Father. He felt the spiritual pain of all of the world's wickedness, the payment for that being brought upon him. And it is on Thursday in the Garden of Gethsemane that he is anticipating that and asking the Father if there's any other way for him to not have to drink the cup of God's wrath. And that is the one thing that I'd like you to focus on today because the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation chapter 14 that at the end of time when all is said and done and there are a group of people who choose Antichrist over Christ, and they worship Antichrist, and they take the mark of the beast, the Bible says in Revelation 14, 10, that they will drink the, the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath, and that they will be tormented forever and ever. These Antichrist worshipers will drink the cup of God's wrath. And they will be tormented forever and ever, separated from the goodness and the grace and the favor of God in the eternal lake of fire. Why do I bring that up? Because that's what I should have to endure. For my sin, for my rebellion against God, for my putting anything else in the place of Christ rather than the Savior. The spirit of Antichrist is already in the world, and the spirit of Antichrist is in every person who has resisted falling down on their knees and asking Jesus to forgive them and to be the Savior and the Lord of their life. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, anticipating the cup that he was about to drink. He was doing it for you. He was doing it for me. And even though his flesh resisted that because of the spiritual, emotional, and physical pain he was about to undergo, he went through it nonetheless so that you and I would never have to drink the cup of his wrath and be separated from God and all of his goodness forever and ever and ever. Jesus in the garden, crying, calling out to the Father, knowing what he was going to face, and yet ultimately saying, whatever your will is, Father, because Jesus saw you. He knew the sin that you would commit. He knew the sin that I would commit. He knew the status of our rebellious hearts that so easily turn to anything except the God of the universe, the God of the Bible. And yet on Thursday, Thursday after being betrayed by Judas, after honoring the Passover with his disciples, he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane right before his arrest and he talks about the cup that he is about to drink the cup of God's wrath that you and I will never have to drink because Jesus did it on our behalf. I urge you to read through Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 to 45 today and to pray and to ask God to let the reality of what Jesus did on this holy, sacred Thursday, sink deeply into your heart. God bless you, my friends.